Hey guys, Dark Skeleton here, and I wanted to touch on something a little bit different than I normally do, which is open world RPGs. And one aspect that I frequently see popping up in these games, which I consider to be bad game design. So if you haven't already realized, I'm going to be using Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines as the example, which is a game that came out about 10 years ago, but does share a lot of similarities with other popular titles like the Elder Scrolls series. Now, in these open-world RPG games, you're basically given a character that can be anything you want it to be. You can make a character that's extremely smart, extremely stealthy, weak at combat, or very strong at combat. These kinds of single-player open-world RPG games have probably the most similarity out of any video game to pen-and-paper RPGs. In the case of Vampire the Masquerade's Bloodlines, it's literally an adaptation straight from the core vampire pen-and-paper game. On the whole, I find the game to be very good, and it really does the original system a lot of justice. But one of the biggest problems that these open-world games have is when there is a key storyline quest that essentially only has one way of solving the problem. And in many cases, especially since it's a video game, it comes down to, here's a guy you need to kill to progress in the game, beat him, and then you can continue. In the case of almost any other video game, it's fine to throw that kind of thing in front of your player base because the games are much more linear, they don't really give you options, and in many cases they don't even have stats that you level up. It's just, if you want to beat this guy, you have to be good enough to complete it. Now that you've beaten it, we as the game designers believe that you are good enough for the next stage. Now, why it's so annoying when a open world game that allows you to level up your stats, choose what kind of character you want to build, forces you into straight-up combat with a difficult foe in order to progress through the game, is that it basically says to the player, hey, you may have had a more creative solution than just fighting a guy in order to progress through the game, but because of the limitations of video games and our lack of foresight into giving you different options, you have to fight this guy, and if you don't have a character that's designed for combat, well, guess what? You're totally screwed. Now this is bad, because if you want to realistically progress in the game, and any other similar games, then you have to put a lot of points into combat abilities. Now when I'm playing pen and paper RPGs, I tend to not like to play the characters that go all out in combat. I like to find more creative, social, or just thinking solutions to problems, rather than just beating another guy and do a pulp. But if I go and do that like I did in Vampire the Masquerades, then that means I have a ridiculously tedious time fighting a boss that should have otherwise not really been that hard just because I didn't buff up my combat stats at all. So it really ends up detracting from the whole open world aspect of the game, and also the whole idea that you can be any character that you want to be. Instead, you're forced to metagame where you're thinking to yourself as a human being, hey, if I want to progress through this game, I have to make sure my character's good at shooting people, even though that's not the kind of character I originally wanted to play. It boils a lot of these RPGs down to being a simple action mechanics based game, rather than coming anywhere close to giving you the same kind of RP experience that you would expect out of a pen and paper campaign. And then if you decide to be one of the suckers who decides to make the decision to play a character that actually sucks at combat, you're forced into these boss fights and at that point, because the boss has so much better statistics than you do, the only real way to win is to either restart the game or to abuse the mechanics of the game in a way that was completely unintended. Either that or reattempting the same boss fight over and over again which completely removes you from any role-playing experience that was originally there. For a game that's trying to emulate a pen and paper RPG where when your character dies once you're permanently dead, and then to force you into a situation where you're guaranteed to die at least a few times is a little bit non-ideal. Now, understandably, when it comes to video games, it's a lot harder to bring out the open-world concept because everything has to be built literally into the game. You can't have quests suddenly pop up because a storyteller or a dungeon master decided that they were going to throw something new into the game. So it's not too hard to see that they can't program every kind of solution into every possible circumstance. And honestly, I don't even expect that. One of the core components of every RPG is that any single character can never do absolutely everything. But when the game is putting you on a main storyline mission which is completely unavoidable and provides you one single solution to that problem, and not only doing it once, but for every single mission, more or less, then that really harms the role-playing aspect that's supposed to be part of these RPGs. It drives them towards action RPGs, which are supposed to be all about combat and just grinding through waves of enemies. 
And Albert forces you to metagame, which is just thinking outside of your character, and more in terms of how to beat the game rather than how to play a character. Now personally, I think this has always been one of the main weaknesses of computer RPGs, that they don't really allow you to explore other sides of things rather than character combat and how to progress through dungeons. Now all that said, I really am enjoying playing through Vampire the Masquerade's Bloodlines, and I am a big fan of other games like Oblivion and Skyrim as well. It's just that it's kind of a pain when you have those little erg moments and you go completely taken out of the game to the point where it's like, okay, how do I break the system so that I can actually progress through the game? I do really enjoy it when there are multiple solutions to any given mission in an RPG, and I think that's how it should be. I just hope that as games go further and further into the future, for RPGs specifically that are supposed to have more role-playing aspects than pure combat, that they add other ways of completing games than just to create a character who's an absolute combat beast. I've been Dark Skeleton, and if you agree or disagree with my opinions here on the matter, go ahead and leave a comment down below. If you enjoy my videos, please consider donating to my Patreon, the link is down in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.